Our next speaker is another friend of mine. He's literally down to earth. The shortest person I know, but also one of the funniest people I ever met. He's larger than life. Everybody give it up for Eric Garden. Everybody has something that makes them stand out, make them feel different, or utterly unique. Well, and we want somebody to relate to. As you can see, I'm probably the shortest person in the room. Um, here's a story right before I got incarcerated. Uh, I was on my way to work, had my book bag on with my uniform in it, and I uh, went to the deli. And uh, upon arrival into the deli, I see a bunch of little dudes, like eight, nine of them. I'm like, yo, what are you guys doing here? They're like, oh, we're going to a hooky party. Really? A hooky party? You guys are cutting school, and on top of that, your parents come in here and shop every day. They act like they didn't care. I said, okay, say less. There goes one of your moms right there. They try to hide behind some chips. Now, things really went south for these little dudes that wanted to cut school that morning, and Truancy ran into the store. Truancy is like auxiliary officers to make sure kids go to school. So I'm, an, I'm a grown man, so I'm standing there talking to the store clerk, and the truancy officer decides that he wants to apprehend me. What, what are you doing, dude? What are you doing? Get on the wall. What school do you go to? Cut it out. I'm an adult. So I asked the store clerk to give me some assistance, and uh, he acted like he didn't know English. I'm in the store pretty much every day. They threw me back in the paddy wagon, and I'm telling the officer, like, uh, are you aware that I'm an adult? Be quiet. Now I'm steaming. I'm going to be late for work. My bad day got a little bit better when the truancy officer stepped in, another, his partner, and I, was, I went to school with him. So I'm like, hey, Lewis, what's up? He's like, what's up, Eric? What are you doing in there? I said, uh, I should be asking your partner that. And he goes, oh, yeah, he's an adult. Thank you. Uh, they, they brought me breakfast, lunch, and I got a, a job to work that morning. So, so I won't be late. Um, now back to relating. Uh, relating is hard for a lot of people around us and easy for others. Uh, they, and there are those where he or she may feel that they can't relate to anything at all. They make themselves the unrelatable. My mom passed away from breast cancer 11 days after my 14th birthday. And this was a devastating situation, not only for me, my, my two younger siblings, and my elderly grandparents. I had to find no help well, find ways to help them cope with the loss as well. Now, finding ways to grieve is hard. Um, I had to mentally and emotionally mature before everybody in my social circle, and this was like a very hard time in my childhood. Yeah, people show compassion, sympathy, but no one can really empathize at that moment with you. You need someone to relate to. We all go through different pains and traumas in our life at different times, and it's, it's difficult. Um, growing up and not having anybody to relate to is like really difficult, and we, we seek that companionship. Um, so with that being said, a couple of months ago, my little sister emailed me, and she said that I needed to call her urgently. So me thinking the worst, I call her, I ask her what's going on. She said that I needed to call my childhood friend Oliver because he's lost and he wanted to tell me. So I called my friend Oliver. He had explained that his father had passed away with and had, a, had, had an accident. And what surprised me next was what he asked me. He asked, how could I possibly have gotten through the loss of my mother? Now, so many emotions came flooding back at that moment, like, wow, how did I really handle it? So I told my friend, life is how you perceive everything in that moment. And would your father want you to give up or be there for your, your, your mother and your brother who so desperately need you? I told him that I had no choice but to keep going and I had to live, love, and laugh. We live to learn and learn to live the life challenge thrown our way. We have to love each moment that we share with those people that, that have just passed on and be there for the ones who need us and the ones who love us. 
and my personal favorite, laughter. If we can't laugh about the memories we created with those individuals, then we risk losing everything and we can't get past that loss. I never thought that my life altering experiences would be or help somebody find strength. I never thought being unrelatable would see somebody find a bigger picture or see the bigger picture. I never thought that, well, let me say, being unrelatable is only a temporary moment in our lives where we bridge the gap between one another. We, we need to remember that the knowledge we gain from these unrelatable or life, life pains and traumas are helping those who feel unrelatable become relatable in our shared humanity. Thank you.